Despite not owning any form of driver's license, one of my biggest interests was automobiles in general. If you know me well, the franchise I enjoyed the most out of my childhood was Pixar's Cars franchise. While we all know Pixar's Cars was one of the biggest juggernauts in the talking vehicle market about racing, what if I told you there was another series like Cars but had a short shelf life and got forgotten over time? That series was David Jenkins and Chapman Entertainment's stop motion racing cartoon. A largely episodic series focusing on the misadventures at Silver Hatch Racetrack, especially ones caused by the titular Rory the Racing Car, a small, naive, yet determined car who befriends several memorable characters in the process along a bunch of episodes. My exposure to this show was through Nick Jr. in the Philippines, which is where it aired over here. Just like Chuggington, I love the show, despite it not being my favorite show in the world. Purely because I was blinded for my love of cars, which overtook my life back then. But as I grew older, I forgot about it. Swept it under the rug, just like my other talking vehicle interests at the time. But then I saw a certain Diamond Bolts video on the subject, which was featured on a video about weird cartoons that he did, right out of the blue. Lightning McQueen, you better get the out of the way, because he hasn't heard of my boy Rory. And then it came back to me. I did want to talk about this show even before the conception of the channel. I wanted Rory to be the Ford video right before the Motor City review eventually took its place. So I conducted a poll to see which underrated talking vehicle show I should talk about next right after my Chuggington one. And in a poll consisting of that, Tayo the Little Bus, and Underground Ernie, Rory won by a magnificent landslide. Sorry Tayo and Ernie fans, maybe one day. But I held it off due to my Motor City hyperfixation driving me to make a big video on that instead. I kept it in the list of video ideas until today! That's right, today we will go over Rory the Racing Car from its history, characters, writing, and the world. Is Rory yet another underrated children's classic or an overrated mess that deserves to be forgotten? Let's find out! So buckle up your seatbelts and grab your helmets as we dive fender first into one of the most overall talking vehicle projects ever. But first, this video has been brought to you by me! Hey, you! Yes, you! Have you ever wanted your personalized art done up in the style of the art that you see in my videos? Well, you're in luck! Introducing my very own commissions! At only $18, you can get requests done by me! Want shading in the background? Pay 5 bucks for those perks so you can wow your friends! Warning! Do not request NSFW or offensive content or else you'll get sent to the Shadow Realm like Sir Handel. I'm banishing you to the Shadow Realm. No. Much better. Head on down to Wax World Commissions by sending me an email at wackinator05 at gmail.com, all in lowercase, to send me your PayPal or Gcash so we can negotiate. Speaking of negotiate, I am also doing paintings, which you can mark your price by emailing me at the aforementioned email. Commission today so you can see your favorite vehicle nerd make videos tomorrow. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. I want to start this video to clear up some big misconceptions. Contrary to popular belief, Keith Chapman, creator of Bob the Builder, Paw Patrol, and that one cartoon that drove me insane, didn't create Roy the Racing Car. While Rory does have a very similar art style and animation to Bob, it doesn't mean that Chapman created it. Chapman was only the producer and designer of Rory the Racing Car, and by definition, means he was responsible for the management of the show, being the head of Chapman Entertainment, the show's creator company and all, not to mention the designer of the character designs, which is why they're very similar to those seen in Bob the Builder. So, the real creator of Rory the Racing Car was David Jenkins, who is a guy who seemed to be unknown given the lack of his own Wikipedia page. But what we do know is that according to the Rory the Racing Car Wikipedia article, Jenkins created this series after working at a senior management gig in Brands Hatch, a speedway in the UK that inspired Rory's fictional Silver Hatch Racetrack, alongside Silverstone Racetrack. The idea for Rory was conceived because Jenkins' son loved racing cars on screen as he watched the Grand Prix on the telly alongside his father. So, Jenkins reached out to the aforementioned Keith, and then the two collaborated on it. Rory the Racing Car started development in 2005 with an unaired pilot. Footage of it 
doesn't exist anywhere. But what we do know was that Rory was originally green and Maxi was originally red. That's it. We don't know if the voice actors were going to be the same as the final show. Speaking of voice actors, the show ended up securing Peter John Kay, a famous English celebrity and comedian. Broke my wrist. Think thumbs up wrong way. I'm like, what are you doing? Is that a fly? I said, Nan, I'm on my way up now. Have you got any ice? Put some ice on it. Oh, ice. Hang on. Can hear a banging about it, freezer like. Right? As the voice of Big Chris and Tin Top in the UK dub. Oh, and I mentioned the word UK dub because there was a US dub of the show, which was created by Hit Entertainment. Owners of famous preschool shows such as Thomas and Friends, Fireman Sam, and Bob the Builder. However, it is lost media as most of the dub's episodes aren't found anywhere. No knowledge is that most of the voice actors like Peter Kay were replaced with local American actors such as Carrie Shale, Larry from Gumball, and CGI Henry himself, voicing Big Chris and Tin Top. Not to mention that characters like CC, Flash, Plugger, and FB had the names changed to stuff like Zizzy, Furs, Lugger, and Truxy. Okay, unpopular opinion coming right up! But honestly, even though I could tolerate the US dubs of shows like Thomas, Bob the Builder, or Chuggington, I, I'll admit, I hate the Rory the Racing Car US dub because of the bad voice acting. Uh, hang on, mustn't forget me donuts. Oh, that'd be terrible. I love me donut meats, the highlight of my day. Whoa, hang on. Mustn't forget my donut. Oh, that'd be terrible. I love my donut. Boy, it's the highlight of my day. You know what? Maybe it's for the best it stays lost. Besides Chapman, Crossgrove Hall was the biggest collaborator in the show's production. They had a pretty prolific lifespan making British shows until 2009. Crossgrove was also responsible for animating many British stop-motion shows, such as Naughty's Toyland Adventures, NG Benji, Little Robots, Fetch the Vet, The 3rd to 6th Postman Pat Seasons, and Fifi and the Flower Tots, another show by Chapman Entertainment. The human props were done by McKinnon and Saunders, who had a prolific work career making puppets for projects like Gilmero Del Toro's Pinocchio movie and Keith Chapman's very own Bob the Builder. Vehicle characters were done by John Wright Model Making, which did vehicle models for stop-motion projects such as Wallace and Gromit or Postman Pat. An interesting thing about the show is the use of CGI in certain scenes, which will be elaborated on later, provided by Studio Riddell. Interestingly, they provided animation work for the LEGO Dimensions video game and commercial work for Fall Guys, as well as work for a certain definitely not a financial flop thing called NFTs. Rory would launch on Milkshake at Channel 5 in the UK, as well as Nick Jr. and Sprout in the US, around May 7th, spanning four seasons until September 29, 2010. And what better way than to start talking about the show than to begin with the characters themselves? Rory the Racing Car, the show, follows several different characters, human, animal, and especially machine. There's the titular Rory, obviously, a British Formula Ford sporting the number one, much like a certain other talking vehicle we all know and love, or sometimes dislike and or tolerate. He's a good main character, in the same way I feel about the Chuggington trainees. Why? Because he isn't an annoying child character and actually has a distinct personality. He's daring but also is very clumsy and naive. Yet at the end of the day, he has a selfless engine. Rory ultimately is a good example of how to write a good child vehicle character for a preschool show. Not annoying, but someone who is relatable and has clear flaws. Other than Rory, there are four more main race cars. First off is Maxi, the Italian Formula 1 racer from Italy. He's the de facto Gordon of the team due to his pompous showboating personality. He tends to have a large ego, but is later humbled when he needs to be. This guy, being the Gordon Harrison stan that I am, Maxi is one of my favorite characters in Rory the Racing Car. Not THE favorite of the show, but still, he's a one finely tuned car indeed. Another finely tuned car is Tin Top, who is based on a NASCAR series stock car, specifically the one driven by Dale Jarrett in the American flag colored number 88 livery. A very accident-prone vehicle that isn't the brightest car in the garage, but is occasionally a good sport despite his constant wreckage. He's one of my favorite characters in the show due to his design and personality. Despite wrecking a lot, he is a kind sport and is pretty much the opposite of Maxi, 
who is idolized by Rory, as the red car idolizes his racing skills. Another friend of Rory is Cece, the French WRC rally car, who is a calm and reserved car who happens to be Rory's best friend. Despite being the subject of a couple of episodes, Cece, in my opinion, is one of the least interesting characters in it, due to her appearances mostly being defined by, uh, her accent. Thank you, Rory, Sherry. I just hope Mr. Cabaret That was you. brilliant! Not implying that she has no personality, quite the contrary. She's very challenging and daring, making her a pretty good role model for girls watching this show. But she doesn't really click with me like the other cars. Though when she is the spotlight of her own episode, her personality does indeed shine. The last character to note is Drifter, a smart and wise Japanese street tuner. Just like CC, he feels like he's defined by his accent, yet not much is done with him, probably even less than CC. Just like her, he shines in the very sparse starring roles that he has. Not much to say about him, but he is smart and skilled at drifting and uh, that's it. There's also a good variety of vehicle characters making up the supporting cast, like Conrad the Australian V8 racer, Breeze the dune buggy, Booger the track recovery pickup, Heli the helicopter, James the Aston Martin convertible, Loda the racing hauler, Rusty the caravan trailer, or Nick the Lamborghini police car are all good characters with memorable personalities, voices, designs, and moments. I just think they're nifty. But compared to the main cast, they don't get enough episodes to themselves, which is just kinda disappointing. I mean, characters like Heli, Rusty, Plugger, and even Nick have episodes to themselves, but they aren't really the stars of many episodes compared to the main cast. I get the main cast are the main cast, but maybe more episodes on these side characters would be appreciated. On to non-machine characters, let's start with the GOAT! The man, the myth, the legend, the greatest of all time, Big Chris! Not only is he a good father figure to his cars, but he's also just fun to watch. I smiled and laughed at several intervals because of Peter K's performance as a character and his witty personality. Come on, don't come to daddy. Don't come to daddy, come on. Come here. Without Peter K's line delivery, he would fall flat as a character. Which is why I think Carrie Shale's voice for him sucks. Listen to this! I, that is me, have just been picked to compete on karaoke TV! But let's not worry about that. Aside from Big Chris, there's also Masha the Track Marshal, a foil to the fatherly yet scatterbrained persona of Chris while also being the token straight edged woman of the cast. Masha, love over! Oh, there you are! Just reminding you to clear out the workshop and no tea breaks. Mr. Carburetor is also another prominent human character, being the racetrack's owner. He has a tendency to blow up in front of others due to his short temper, but more often than not, he has a good heart through the many individuals around him. There's also the two talking animal characters. Flash and Malcolm. Flash the Rabbit, being this show's equivalent to Spud from Bob the Builder, is the token non-human comic relief, who occasionally brings a light chuckle here and there. He's not very funny, honestly. A big-headed bunny, yeah. But occasionally, he has his just do's every now and again, every time he messes up. Oh, it's nothing. Just a turbo booster that'll make me much, much faster than any racing car! Malcolm the Mole is meant to be his foil, being kinder and less rambunctious than Flash, but unlike him, he serves as a friend to the vehicles, especially Rory. Is it Malcolm? Uh, What's um, wrong? Uh, Max is stuck in the uh, tunnel. He's uh, uh, broken down. Overall, the cast is pretty good. They're easily distinguishable and far from the most generic trite ever made that most modern preschool shows get stuck in, especially in ones about vehicles. There are prominent young and old characters to diversify the cast which is only backed up by the good writing of this show. I think the writing is pretty well done. Just like Chuggington, it's pretty simple compared to Thomas, being without a narrator and all, but just like that show, it is very character driven. And at the very least, isn't lazy. Episodes have varied plots, like Tin Top being scared, or Heli learning how to power through after a crash. They're all pretty unique and aren't repetitive in the slightest, unlike a certain show Keith Chapman had involvement with. 
they all have great morals for both kids and adults. Morals which I will mention later, but for the long and short of it, it's not that complicated compared to Thomas, but they are solid enough for the viewers, and pretty digestible. And in fact, they're actually pretty good. More on that later. Not to mention the previously mentioned comedy can get pretty funny at times. Also, I'm gonna do something new for the writing section by mentioning this. The songs. Other than the opening theme song, the songs of this show slap pretty hard to the face. Consisting of varied genres too. The caravan to be, but now nothing happens to me. Most of the songs have been released on a CD, which has been put up on archive.org, link in the description below. My only problem with the writing is the narrator. No offense to the late Sir Sterling Moss or his US dub replacement, Sam Hornish Jr., both being famous race car drivers after all, but I think they're kinda pointless. Like, they both give the introduction and the conclusion that just spells out the moral for the audience. While I can praise this show for its good writing that doesn't talk down to kids 24-7, I don't think this was a good writing approach when it comes to the narrator. Let the kids in the audience learn on their own instead of just spelling it out to them. Not to mention that unlike Thomas, the characters in Rory have their own voices so it doesn't need the narrator. Thomas has an excuse, or at least for the Model Era episodes anyway. On the subject matter of episodes, I recommend two favorites of mine, Stars and Cars and Computer Calamity. Stars and Cars is a pretty good episode about Rory trying to prevent Big Chris from leaving for a singing competition that could potentially kickstart his music career, making Chris inevitably leave his job at Silver Hatch. Rory tries so much and fails to convince Chris to stay, all the while thinking Chris doesn't care about him anymore. That is until Big Chris comes back later, realizing that while seeing is his big dream, he cares deeply about his race cars. The moral is pretty much that no matter how long somebody stays away for so long, he will still care for his friends and will cherish them until his dying breath. Which is a good lesson for people who miss friends who have left them. Computer Calamity is my favorite episode, which focuses on a computerized repair system introduced by Mr. Carburetor to take over Big Chris' mechanic job which escalates into Chris quitting his job because of the robotic AI system. That is until Chris comes back after realizing the AI-powered gadget starts causing trouble in the workshop. In essence, this episode was a cautionary tale about artificial intelligence, which is a more timely message now than it was like a decade ago. A moral about how AI is meant to help people instead of purely replacing them. AI should be used in moderation instead of being a substitute for human work, which is something scam making companies haven't taken a glance at. Like, have you even seen or heard about the Woolies chocolate experience fiasco? Which I know I'm not gonna cover in this video for obvious reasons, but there's a lot about it on the internet. This is why you shouldn't scam people with AI images, guys. Going back to the topic, I do believe that Rory the Racing Car is written tightly and is entertaining enough for both kids and grown ups alike. Honestly, it's definitely on par with Chuggington, Underground Ernie, Bob the Builder, or the recent vehicle-themed DC cartoon Bat Wheels. Something very kiddy on the outside, but when you stop to watch it, it's actually a pretty fun show with a good sense of humor and positive life lessons. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet, y'all, because there isn't that much to talk about with the world building compared to Mighty Express or Chuggington. It's lush and colorful but also grounded at the very same time. But one thing I do like about this show is how consistent it is with each prominent vehicle character being sentient. I mean, there's a hovercraft from one episode built by Flash that doesn't have a face, but you could chalk it up as it being handmade instead of, you know, ba built in factory. Another thing of note is the backstories of the characters, like how Big Chris grew up wanting to be a singer, but landed in a dead-end job as a race car mechanic. 
or how Rusty and Plugger were once Big Chris vacationing vehicles before his race car mechanic job, or even how Tin Top used to race a NASCAR before moving to Silver Hatch in the United Kingdom. Overall, there isn't much world building due to how short this show was, lasting only a few seasons, but if there were more seasons to it, it could have expanded in the same way Thomas did. But yeah, there seems to be room for more backstories and world building concepts to tell. Being my first rodeo with a stop motion project as opposed to a 2D or 3D one, I think the animation is pretty amazing. Even by TV standards, they actually managed to make the characters organic or machine pretty lively and expressive without going too over the top with them. It's pretty clever and grounded how the machines, using the limitations of stop motion, move up and down on their axles and use their split bumpers as hands. The latter of which I don't think other talking vehicle projects do when it comes to gesturing. Stuff like Pixar's cars or Tayo the Little Buzz use their wheels as hands, but never in my life have I seen them use their bumpers as hands. I also want to mention the racing scenes. By golly, the racing scenes. They're pretty well choreographed and animated. While often they reuse the same angles in different episodes, they make great use of CGI, which is not great by today's standards, but it flows pretty seamlessly as much as the stop motion animation. Like how the characters make the same slow frame rate facial expressions when they talk, which is something the CGI Bob the Builder projects like Ready Steady Build or the Infamous Reboot don't even try. Also, the set design is great. Going back to Bob the Builder, it does feel very reminiscent of that show, which isn't a surprise since Keith Chapman designed this show alongside producing it. The sets feel very cartoony but also have a very cozy and realistic feeling to them that grounds them in reality, if you catch my drift. Pun intended. Colorful, but still set in a lush English countryside. But also with the buildings like the garage or the starting line, they do feel very inspired by actual British racetrack sets in real life. The character designs are also pretty good too. Again, they're cartoony, but with enough details that ground them in reality way more than Bob the Builder OG did. Just like how their vehicles on like the stop motion Bob actually bear some similarities to their IRL bases more than Bob's vehicles do. Not one to one mind you, but they're close like Chuggington inspired by real life models but with a cartoony spin on things. Before I move on with the toys for this show, it's very funny how if Chapman designed this show, it's funny how his vehicle designing skills went down the drain between this and Mighty Express. I guess 10 years does something to an old man, huh? Unlike Chuggington or Thomas, there wasn't much fanfare surrounding the promotion. I mean, there was a live show, DVDs, a soundtrack CD release, and a couple of toys, but it wasn't too popular. Speaking of toys, the merchandise was handled by Vivid Imaginations, an English toy company that you might recognize as the handler behind the Thunderbirds toys. Their merchandise also got distributed outside the UK through Bandai of all companies. For a corporation responsible for the toys based on Gundam, Ben 10, Dragon Ball, and Power Rangers, or at least used to, Rory, a simple preschool show, is possibly the most out of character thing they'd partner up with, but they, they did! The toys Vivid and Bandai released involved die cast cars, some coming with DVDs too, remote controlled cars, playsets, and large scale talking cars. Not to mention, Kinects of the Mario Kart construction line also get in on the action by making some Rory themed sets. The biggest brand collab that Rory was featured in was the Children in Need music video which put Big Chris and Rory alongside other British TV show legends like Thomas, Fireman Sam, Bob the Builder, Postman Pat, and many others. In hindsight, the lack of popularity or even a prominent push in the US is probably what made the show less popular than say, Thomas and Friends, Bob the Builder, or even Chuggington. If the US dub is mostly lost, then maybe it wasn't famous enough to warrant a full release. And I think the lack of a global audience is what killed the show after a few seasons. It's honestly kinda sad Rory didn't have a long shelf life like the other shows that inspired it. Considering it came around the same time as the Cars franchise was blooming in popularity, it killed any chance at Rory's success. Heck, I'm even shocked that DreamWorks, the current owners of the show after buying out Chapman Entertainment, didn't revive the show. Or at least capitalized on it, given that DreamWorks attempted racing projects like Turbo, or Fast and Furious Spy Racers to rival cars, so why wouldn't they revive Rory as a way to rival Pixar's cars? 
I would be down for a good reboot that is faithful, but modernized. As shown in these drawings, I made before this video's development. My best guess as to why DreamWorks never revived Rory was because the show wasn't popular in the first place. Though I guess it's a blessing, especially considering how downhill both Bob and Thomas went after staying on the air for too long. So maybe it's for the best Rory stayed dead. In full, I am proud to say that Rory the Racing Car is a good kids show. Not the best show by Country Mile, but just like Chuggington, it has all the assets that make it a good show. Assets like good characters, memorable morals, solid writing, a simple yet immersive world, and a great animation style. I do want to say that I still prefer Pixar's cars overall, but Rory isn't a bad watch either. It's a good watch, especially when we are now in an era when preschool related car shows have to be flashy with subpar morals. Rory, despite having some fast-paced moments, isn't subpar and tries its very best to be the best it can be, just like the main character. And that's fine! I hope this video satisfies those who have been longing for a full-fledged review of this forgotten gem. Whether you like it or not, it has been a video I've been wanting to make for a long time, and seeing it put together like my last two positive analysis videos has been pretty well for me. It's time to say goodnight to Silverhatch and its champs for me to finally put this show behind me. This has been Waxter, like, comment, ring the bell, and subscribe, and most importantly of all, stay wacky! So in actuality, you can take this video as a big prequel to one big video I'm gonna make. It's gonna take a while to release it as it's gonna be one long production, but I have brought it up in the community tab before, in passing. But for those who missed it, here's what it is. Presenting in 3, 2, 1. <laughs>